So hello everybody. What you're looking at is uh, 300 points being rotated around the center of the screen uh, in a JSX graph. There's four rotation speeds going on. And depending on how good your zoom is and how good your CPU is, it will be fairly smooth. In my case over here, uh, my, my screen looks great, but the zoom version uh, at the other end is, is maybe not so good. So please believe me throughout this that when I say it's, it's smooth, <laughs> it actually is smooth. So I'll just go back to that. What I wanted to point out was that we've got 60 frames per second going on here, which is what we're going to be aiming for all the way through. If you can achieve 60 frames per second with your animations, it's more likely to be smooth. So my challenge was like this. I'm, I'm pretending that I'm creating a game or an activity of some sort for students, and it involves uh, various movements of these points. And I want students to be able to actually interact with what's going on after I've finished. So when I hit the animate button up here, uh, what will happen is my dots will explode out and then they'll rotate around uh, and I'll be able to stop things. The creation period here is how long it took to create the dots, which is nice and short. The duration is how long it's going to take for the explode motion when the, the dots explode out. And the frame rate you'll see will settle down to 60 frames per second. Always takes a while to build up to the correct speed. So, uh, it exploded out and now they're rotating around and we had a change of color and all of that. Now I'm going to stop them and I'm going to move my dots a bit and animate again and move my dots a bit more. And you'll notice that I can stop, I can move dots around and I can animate. Now, that's actually a fairly significant thing with what I'm trying to do here to get nice smooth animations. Uh, yeah, being able to interact again with JSX Graph is important for things like dragging dots and doing other interactions. And I'll talk about that some more later. Okay, so <laughs> sorry about that. A glitch. So to summarize, we want to animate a large number of points in JSX Graph, have them explode and then rotate. Achieve 60 frames per second, which is our screen refresh rate uh, with most monitors. Sometimes you have a faster one, but that's normally what we get. And we want to interact with the points after each animation step. Uh, even on low end phones, we want to have a, a, a decent uh, frames per second. Sometimes phones actually only manage 30 or they're throttled down to 30, uh, but at least if we can get that, then usually it's not too bad much lower than that, then it's, then it's not smooth at all. Uh, we want to have a minimal DOM, which means the minimum number of HTML elements going on, and minimal CPU usage. The lower we can have the CPU, the better it actually is. So uh, this is basically a history of my attempts with animation over the years with JSX Graph. Uh, many years ago, I used to create points and then uh, remove an old point and create a new point and then remove the old point and create a new point to make it look like the points were actually moving. Then what I tried were creating invisible points and changing the visibility so that uh, I'd have all the points ready and then change the visibility so that it looked like the points were moving. Then JSX Graph had set point, and I started using set point, and this uses a translation. In, internally, it uses a translation to move points around. Uh, and set point directly is similar, but it changes the CX and CY values, which I'll talk uh, about later. You can apply a transform, a translation or a rotation to a point. Uh, you can use move to, which moves the point to a new location over a certain time period. You can use visit, which is just two lots of move to, one to go somewhere and then one to come back. And move along, which you create a path and then you can move the point along that, that path. Uh, and then 
all of the above, one to eight uh, things that you can do with JS Extract. And then tonight I'm going to show you a, a process which is independent of JS Extract, uh, which is how I achieved the, the smooth animations you saw before. In general, transforms are the most efficient way to move SVG elements. And I'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. Very quickly, SVG basics, if you're not sure, uh, when you ask SVG to create uh, a board, what it does, it creates an SVG, a scalar vector graphic. Um, when you ask it to create a point, what it does is it creates something like this. It creates the SVG, and then each time you create a point, it actually creates an ellipse with Rx and Ry values identical, so it looks like uh, a circle. And in my example here, I'm going to have a point 10 pixels in from the left and 20 pixels down from the top. So here's what it looks like. And if I want to move the point, I can change that CX and CY to something like this. Maybe CX is 80 and CY is 40. Now I'll be 80 pixels in from the left and 40 pixels down. It'll look something like this. Uh, in a lot of the coding that I've done here, I need to target the ellipse directly. This is not the same as targeting JSX graphs point. I'm actually targeting that ellipse that I'm talking about, uh, this one up here directly. And to do that, I use point.ren node. And in this case, it's equivalent to document.query selector hash bi2j3, which is the ID that I use for my ellipse up here. So those are some basics that are going on with some of the coding that I'm using, that I'm showing you tonight. Um, for animation, I'm making use of request animation frame. And it fires at 60 times per second, uh, which is the screen refresh rate. It may be faster at a higher, uh, better monitor, but uh, this is the standard for most monitors. And the, the process looks something like this. We set up a request animation frame, and all it does is calls the function in which it sits. So it will just call the function in 1 60th of a second, call the function again 1 60th of a second, and so on. And I'm making a lot of use of, of that for my animations. Now I'm going to talk about performance monitoring. Whenever you create something with a whole lot of points uh, and you find things are getting slow, it's really good to actually use uh, the developer tools, especially available in Chrome and Firefox and so on. Um, the example I'm using here is Chrome. And uh, I'll, I'll bring up the, the uh, developer toolbox. And you, you find rendering. So this is the three dots menu at the bottom. I'm talking about this three dots menu. And you'll find down here, you'll find rendering. And in rendering, you'll see frame rendering stats. Now, there's a whole lot of other really good stuff in here. But because of time, I'm only going to talk about frame rendering stats here. And that brings up this window on the, the far left, where you can see the, uh, the frame rate that, that's actually happening at the moment. Now, I'm not doing anything on the screen at the moment, apart from a little bit of uh, moving the mouse around. So there's not much going on. Uh, it's probably actually ticking through right now because Zoom is actually doing stuff on my screen as well. Normally, there's nothing happening here at all uh, if there's no animation going on. Um, you've also got Performance Monitor, which I'm going to start. So once again, from the three dots menu, I'm going to bring up Performance Monitor. Now, this is great. This actually shows you your CPU usage and how many DOM nodes you've got going on and a bunch of other stuff as well. The layouts per second is the same as the frame rate. Currently, there's zero uh, layouts going on because I'm not changing anything on the screen, so the browser doesn't have to do anything. Also, currently, the CPU is not at all busy. There's nothing happening much. It's right down near 0%. Now, the other thing that I find really useful is the performance recorder. Now, you find the performance recorder up here on the top, one of the tabs at the top and you'll see performance. Uh, you may need to move the videos away to be able to see what, what's actually in there, like the Zoom videos of uh, me and so on. You might want to move that away. 
Um, anyway, in here you've got quick record button or control E to start a new recording. So when an animation is going on, you can actually click record and it will record what's happening on the screen and give you a very good analysis of all the JavaScript uh, functions that are being called, how long they take, uh, how and where the bottlenecks basically are. So it's a very, very useful tool uh, and I recommend that you, you learn how to use it. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with it tonight because it just takes a while for it to record and then process the recording and so on, but I will show you some of the results of doing it. Okay, so let's move to some of the examples uh, that I was talking about before, some of the ways that we can actually achieve my, my blowing up dots and rotating and so on. Let's see how it can actually work. Now, in JSX Graph, you can do set position. And set position works like this. You need to suspend the update and then tell JSX Graph where you want the point. PT is my point. Uh, you tell it where you want it to move, in this case, to some value XY. And then once it's actually moved there, uh, you unsuspend the update. Um, now, remember, I'm doing this with a whole lot of points. Uh, so what I need to do to be able to get the effect of my points moving is I need to do quite a lot of suspend updates, change the position, and then unsuspend the update. And what that means is it updates the board and updates all of the, the values in the JSX graph object in the background. So here's my demo of using set position. And I'll start with 36 points. Uh, once again, the creation time has been nice and short. Duration is the time that it takes for the dot to explode out, and then we'll see what the frame rate looks like. So here I'm animating. It's very slow and clunky. Um, this, the, the frame rate meter up here on the left is better than my JavaScript one. This takes a while to settle down to the actual speed. It's indicating here that I'm getting 14 frames per second. It's not 60, so it's not at all fast and it's not at all smooth. It's, to me, it's jerky, and uh, I'm sure it's jerky for you on your Zoom screen as well. Something else I want to point out over here, the CPU usage is through the roof. It's 100%. The CPU is so busy, it's just maxing out at 100%. It can't do anything more than what it's doing. It's trying its best, but it can't do any more. I'll stop it. I'll show you that I can actually drag things afterwards and animate it. It works, but it's incredibly slow. So summary, uh, I can interact with the points after the rotation. Uh, it's slow because the board suspend update and unsuspend update is actually uh, very, very slow in, uh, in the background. You need to keep track of points in a separate matrix. And it was actually very troublesome to, to code and to get it to work. Um, the performance recorder, the thing that I was talking about over here on the right, uh, for set position looks like this. Now, it's actually a very interesting graph. The gray dotted lines here are actually each frame. So they, they represent one sixtieth of a second. Uh, down here, the various things that JSX Graph is trying to do. It's, it's doing an animation. There's a function call. Do FPS is my own um, function. And the unsuspend updates and then the full update and update take all of this time through here. Remember, there's a whole lot of points that I'm trying to update at once. And I need to actually unsuspend the update, move the points, and then unsuspend the update and it just takes a lot of time. The yellow hash bits along here indicate that the frame is not being drawn properly. In this eight frame segment, there's only one frame that got drawn properly is this one. Green means it gets drawn properly. All the rest of it means that it's not drawn properly and hence it's all um, jerky and slow and not at all smooth. So this is not a good outcome. Um, set position directly is similar because we have to do suspend update and unsuspend update, so it's similarly slow. Okay, so let's move on to my, my, my next option, transform, because uh, I said before that transforms are the best way to move things, and, and normally it is. 
to do a transform in JS Extract, you set up something like this. And what's going on here is that I'm, I'm transforming, I'm rotating my point. Uh, I will rotate my point when I apply it uh, by one degree in clockwise direction, uh, like this. I apply that to my point, and then I need to unsuspend the update. So once again, these update steps uh, are, are actually inefficient when we try and do a whole lot of points. This one looks actually pretty much like the last one. It's slow to explode and it's slow to rotate. Once again, we're getting about 14 frames per second and we're getting a CPU usage of very close to 100%. So it's not good. Um, please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't use these things, but I'm saying that if you uh, have a lot of points, a lot of objects going on and you want to animate them, uh, these are probably not the best way of going about that. So conclusion, once again, I could have interacted with the points. Uh, it's slow because of the board, suspend update and unsuspend update steps. Once again, it was troublesome to, to actually code and to get it to work. Okay, let's move on to another one, move two. Now, move two uh, works like this. I tell it from wherever it is to move to some new point x, y, and this is 500 milliseconds, so in half a second, uh, get it to move to that, uh, that new position. This uses set position because it's smoothly across the given duration here, a half a second. So uh, once again, I need to keep track of points that have been dragged uh, using my own matrix. So here's move two. Uh, if you observe this time, as it explodes out, it's nice and smooth. But once we get to the rotation, uh, not so much. Let's have a look. So it was quite smooth exploding out. Um, but the, uh, the rotation is not bad. I'm getting 50 frames per second and some jerkiness. Uh, but I want to point out what's going on up here. See all the changes in color? What that's indicating is that it's very, very busy. It's frantically trying to do stuff. And all the red bits means that uh, it's, it's failing. And, and that's why we're getting the, uh, the, the um, jittering going on. Here we've got uh, CPU usage is once again through the roof at 100%. If you've got anything else going on in your screen, it's going to be very, very slow. Uh, and another thing is, uh, if students are doing this on a phone, uh, their, their battery life disappears very, very quickly because of this very high CPU usage. So, uh, summary, I can interact with the points. I need to keep track of the points in a separate matrix as before. Now, it's good for straight line movement. It's great for that. It's, it's smooth, it will give you 60 frames per second uh, uh, as one step. But when I'm trying to do circles and curves, what I've got to do is I've got to move it by one degree and then update everything. Move it by another degree, update everything. Move it by another degree, update everything. And so that's what's really slow. Um, the performance recorder this time is better. This time we're seeing uh, a lot more green, which means that things are, are actually working properly. Uh, the length of the function calls is much shorter. So the, the browser has got more of a chance of actually writing to the screen uh, the, the updated points, but we're still getting some frames which, which are dropping out, uh, which, which is indicated by the yellow hash. So we're not there yet. Um, let's try move along. Now, for move along, we set up a path and then we move the dot along the path. Now, it's actually good. Uh, here I am setting up the path. This is just um, polar coordinates, uh, cos of x and sine of x. And then we set up the paths like this. Uh, so what's happening here is I just draw all my points that are going on. I need to set up um, a path for each of the points so that we get a circle for, uh, for each one of the points. And then I move along the, the path, my path J, um, in five seconds. Uh, don't worry about the interpolate 
false for now. It just means it's smoother. Now the problem with this is that I've only I only have one circle. It only goes around one circle once, and then it just stops because that's how that's what it's designed to do. But I want my circle. I want my points to go around, around, around infinitely until I hit the stop button. So what I need to do is I need to set up a timer, a set interval, so that this it moves everything. Uh, takes five five seconds to do it, and every five seconds I want it to repeat that process. So that was all fun, uh, but when I actually went to try and get it to work, it was just it was too hard. It was just so much going on, and I had three or four goes of it, and it was just horrible, uh, and it, it really didn't work very well at all. So I ended up just doing just this much, uh, not not the full number of points I had before, but just like this to give you an idea of how it works. So here's move along, and look at that. We've got 60 frames per second. This is when there's clear color here, it doesn't change color. It means everything is smooth. And look at the CPU usage. It's four or five percent. So this is great. Things are going around nicely. Um, but even for me here, it's actually jerky. It's not going smoothly. Uh, the pink dot started at the bo uh, bottom left here, about here somewhere. And every time it gets near there, it goes to that set interval. Uh, it actually has this little jerk there for me. And I can see that for you, it's also not, uh, not particularly smooth. But in theory, this is the best one yet. We've, we've got 60 frames a second. It's going around just nicely, uh, low CPU, and it's all good. Um, I'm going to stop it about here and move a couple of points. But I want to point out something. I, I, one of the reasons I abandoned this, uh, I'm, I'm pretending now that I'm using a, a phone. I'm using an iPhone. Uh, SE, and I, I face the following problem. If I try and drag some of these points, I'm going to make a liar of me now. Um, I don't know whether you can see what's happening, but if I drag this point, the point below it is actually moved. If I drag this point, the point below. And I thought, oh, yikes, <laughs> I can't figure out what's going on there. So I gave up on that. So I just go back to here. So uh, I'll show you. I, I've been talking all the way through about keeping track of points in my own matrix. For this one, I didn't do that because I just wanted to show you that it, it could get the good frame per second. Um, and I didn't keep track of all my points. And what happens is when I animate it again, it just all zips back to the beginning. It loses all of my changes uh, and all around it. It doesn't kind of work. So it's fast, but it's not particularly successful. So conclusion, we did get 60 frames per second. Uh, it's troublesome to set up all the points and circles and allow for stop, start, and drag. In fact, so troublesome, I, I just had to give up. Um, no need to tell JSX graph where the points are after translation and rotation, but there was something funny going on with uh, moving things on a phone, and yeah, so it had problems. So given all that, each one is faster than the one before. Each one is a bit smoother than the one before, but each one has uh, some problems. So one thing I ended up doing was creating my, my own code where this is non-JSX code. There, there is no function in JSX called mod CXCY. It's my own function. And what I'm doing is I'm operating it outside of the JSX graph workflow. So the basic idea is, uh, I don't worry about trying to update JSX graph. I just do my animation. And then when my animation is finished, then I update JSX graph and tell it where all my points have ended up. So I'm changing the CX and CY values of each point's ellipse directly. So like this, um, all this is is just um, rotating a point around uh, some center, which is the middle of the board in this case. So my new CX and new CY is just rota rotating a point, a uh, particular angle theta. This, this is pseudo code, of course. And then I set the new CX um, as the CX value is the new CX and the CY value is new CY. Um, after the animation, when I stop, 
I need to tell JSX Scrap where the points are. So it's like this. Uh, this is internal to JSX Scrap. I just tell it where I've moved my point to, where it's got to. And that's the, the X value and the Y value like that. After each drag, I have to do the same kind of thing because JSX Graph, uh, while it knows where, because it's a drag and it's updated, but I found that I needed to also update after each drag. And I'm keeping track of where everything is with my own separate uh, C, CX, CY matrix as before. Okay, so the the end result is like this. I animate, it will explode smoothly for me and rotate smoothly as follows. So you'll notice on the top left, I'm getting 60 frames per second, which is beautiful. My CPU usage is about 12, 14%, something like that. And everything is rotating smoothly. Uh, I move my dots around just to show that it can be done. And reanimate and things roll just nicely, mostly. <laughs> and I'll show that it can be done in 144 uh, dots as well. Uh, animate that, which on zoom looks pretty slow and awful, but trust me, it looks good here. Okay, so I finally achieved what I wanted to achieve, which was to have the points explode and have them rotate smoothly and allow the user to move dots around. Maybe they have to move the dots you know, onto some curve or line or something on the screen, uh, whatever. So the conclusion, I changed the CX and CY values of each ellipse. I could have used translate and rotate, but because I was using CX and CY for everything else, I just stuck with it for this. Uh, I achieved 60 frames per second with a low CPU. Uh, and the performance recorder is beautiful. Look at this. Everything's green, which means every frame is being drawn to the screen properly every 1 60th of a second. And my coding means that this is all that, uh, all that the browser has to do. It uses a very small part of each frame to calculate. This is the calculate part here and to uh, draw the screen, which is this part here. And then the rest of the frame, it can just rest. It's got nothing to do. So of course, it's going to be smooth. It's never chasing, chasing itself, trying to actually draw things and, and calculate things and update things and so on. So this is why it's, it's very smooth. Um, I, I, as you can see, I could interact with my points after the rotation. Uh, I do need to tell JSX Graph where the points are after my animations and my drag. And I need to keep track of my points in my own separate matrix. But given that, uh, it was still easier to do than move along, uh, which I found really quite challenging to get to work. Okay, so overall conclusions. Uh, to achieve smooth animations with a whole pile of points or objects, uh, all, all interacting at once. Uh, I don't suggest doing new points. That's really slow, painfully slow. Uh, invisible points uh, is actually very quick to animate, but it's very slow to draw all the points that are necessary, and it's DOM heavy. Set point and set point directly are slow because of the suspend update process. Apply a transform, uh, internal updates, high CPU. Every time you apply a transform, you also need to do suspend update. So it slows everything down when you uh, want to do it repeatedly uh, and infinitely. Move to is good for straight line. Um, visit is also good for straight line. And if you're just doing it once, if you're just moving something across the screen, uh, move to and visit can be really good ways of doing that. Move along. Same deal. If you've got a path that you want some object to follow, uh, and if you want to do it once only, this is great. If you want to do it more than once, then maybe not so good. And if you have some mini, mini point thing like I was trying to do, then uh, you could apply something like what I did, independent of the JSX graph flow, and then update JSX graph with your latest information. 
So in general, transforms are the most efficient way to move SVG elements as are changing the CX and the CY flow path. 